I shall call you Mini Mando. Hello, it is Halloween, and for those that have been following the channel for a while, you know I've been working on my own set of Mandalorian armor as a project. However, with it being Halloween, I figured, you know what? Let's do a set of Mandalorian armor for my little guy to dress up for. Instead of, you know, buying a generic spirit Halloween costume with no heart and soul put into it. So, what exactly does it take to put together a quick Mandalorian costume uh, for your little guy, for example, for Halloween? Let's get started. So first things first, you're gonna have to actually find your printed parts. Now with The Mandalorian being a relatively popular show, uh, you can find helmets and sets of the armor, the STLs, for free on various different websites. I'll have the links to the files that I used below. You can also use paid models. So for example, on my Mandalorian armor, I'm using a paid model set from Galactic Armory. Uh, these models for the little guy, uh, they are free models. So usually with the free models, the quality's not quite the same. It's not exactly screen accurate, but Let's be honest, for a little guy, for a Halloween costume he's gonna wear once, um, this'll do good enough. So once you find your files, you're gonna have to print them. Now when it comes to filament choices, you do have a few different options. Most are probably gonna be printing in PLA. It's a lot more forgiving of a plastic, less issues with cracking and warping. The downside with PLA, however, is when it comes to post-processing your prints, there's more work involved. PLA doesn't really sand too well, so, on something like a helmet here, we're gonna have a lot of layer lines that are visible at the top. You're gonna to have to use something like Bondo Spot and Putty Filler to basically glaze everything with a coat of that and then go into your sanding. Um, other materials such as ABS, which is the plastic that I used for my Mandalorian armor, it's all ABS or ASA, uh, that material, you can actually go right into sanding right away. It actually takes to a sander very well. And when you're doing some of the bigger pieces like the chest piece, you can even use something like a palm sander. I used a Black & Decker mouse to really knock down those layer lines very quickly and speed up a lot of the post-processing time. So regardless of which plastic you pick though, you are gonna have to do post-processing to clean it up if that is something you're looking to do, and we'll get more to that later. Now, when it comes to actually printing the parts though in the settings you're gonna use, this depends on your setup and how much time you have. The cleaner the print, usually the less time you have to spend doing post-processing, and sanding sucks, so we try to avoid that. Now, if you're on a time crunch and you only have one printer, you may have to print your parts very fast, you may have to print them with large layer lines. When you print fast on a machine like a bamboo, for example, while this helmet took about half the time of the final helmet that I ended up using, a lot of the overhangs were a bit melty and would have required a lot of work to clean up and get that sharp edge back. So in the end, I used something that I have to my advantage, multiple printers. This helmet here was printed on a Saval SV06, and while that was printing, I had the bamboo printing other parts and along with my Voron printing other parts. So the fastest way to print multiple parts is to use multiple printers because FDM printing, it scales linearly. If you wanna print one part, it's one hour. If you wanna print two parts, it's two hours, usually. Now, another thing to keep in mind when it comes to slicing is scaling your parts. Now for me, um, I'm an average adult male, uh, five foot nine and a half. So most of the parts for my Mandalorian armor are either full size or scaled 90, 95%. Um, however, with a four and a half year old, humans have weird proportions at that size. So for example, his helmet is scaled only 90%. So it's almost my head size. However, things like his shoulder pads are scaled 70%, his chest armor is 60%, and his thigh pads are like 50%. Kids have weird proportions, so when it comes to printing the helmet, for example, what I would recommend is start printing and then just kind of stop once you get a, uh, a ring, and then that way you can take it and test fit it over their noggin to make sure you have everything scaled correctly. There are a few parts that I had to throw out uh, because they just didn't scale right to his size. So you may have to do a little trial and error to make sure everything uh, fits right. Now, after you print your parts, this is where you have to make a choice when it comes to post-processing. Now, with my Mandalorian armor, I've been working on it for a couple months here, here and there. Um, and some of the parts, like my helmet, have easily six to 10 hours of work done into them to get them to this state. Now, with a Halloween costume, my son will be wearing for one day because he's four and a half and he grows like a weed and he probably won't fit into this in six months anyways. Um, I'm not really looking to put days and days and days of work into post-processing these prints. This is all your personal choice though. If you wanna take the parts right off your printer and go right to painting, go right ahead. If you wanna spend weeks getting it perfectly smooth and mere finished, go for it. This is your personal choice. Comes down to how much time 
and how much money and how much effort you want to put into the project. So I kind of went a little bit in the middle. I went with a little bit of sanding, a little bit of Bondo work, just to kind of make it look a little bit better, and then went right into painting. After you do all your sanding, your priming, your painting, sanding, prime, paint, sanding, prime, paint, however many times you want to repeat that process, uh, we go into the paint. And the Mandalorian, if you're doing the Mandalorian armor, um, it's pretty much all silver. Um, I used Rust-Oleum uh, Titanium Silver, I believe, to spray paint everything. Um, when you are spray painting, light coats multiple times give you a better finish than doing one heavy coat. Um, and do it in outdoors in a well-ventilated environment. Also, when you're doing your sanding, try and wear a mask in a well-ventilated environment as well. So now we have all our printed parts done. Now for the flight suit, quick search on Amazon, got me some black coveralls for the little guy. And now you need to attach everything. And this is where Velcro is your friend. Uh, when it comes to attaching everything on this suit, other than the helmet that just sits on his head, everything's just held on with Velcro. And you can buy Velcro um, that has adhesive pads on it. I also used E6000 adhesive to help it stick a little bit better to the fabric. And basically you just lay out the suit, kind of line up where you think everything should go, apply your Velcro, and there you go. Velcro is really nice because you can put the flight suit on without any of the actual armor hanging off of it. Um, especially with a little kid who's antsy, you're less likely to damage everything. And then you could just, you know, go ahead and stick the armor on when you're done. Makes removal very easy as well. For the wrist gauntlets here, uh, these were really simple. I used, again, some of this elastic material here um, as a hinge on one side. And on the other side, I applied it lengthwise to allow it to stretch to fit over his hands when we put him on. And for the chest piece, uh, since there's a zipper that goes down the middle, I again use some of the elastic to just kind of hold everything in position and then two pieces of Velcro to stick it on his chest. This way it's nice and floppy too, so when he bends over and moves around, it, nothing's really poking him. Again, this is also for a four and a half year old, so making the suit comfortable for him is paramount, um, especially with the helmet. Uh, there's foam inside to try and get it to sit as comfortably as possible on him. And also, I didn't put a visor in. Little kids, don't have the greatest situational awareness. And the last thing I want to do is put a dark tinted visor. Um, I was going to put like mesh or something, but you know what? I'd rather have him having the best visibility possible. And when we're out trick or treating, I probably honestly will have him walking around without the helmet on uh, just for safety's sake. And once you have everything put together, you can go ahead and dress him up. Now, while dressing him up here, I noticed there were a few areas I had to adjust the positioning of some of the armor pieces, um, the thigh pads. I went ahead and added more Velcro so they stuck on a little bit better. But for a quick three day project, this turned out pretty well, I think. Uh, but for a kid's Halloween costume, you know what? It does the job. And this only took about three days. It took one day to print all the parts on all my machines, about one day of post-processing and priming, and then a final day to paint everything and put it together. Unfortunately, painting eats up time. Uh, it takes time for the primer to dry before you can go to final paint. If you're painting with multiple colors and you want to tape off sections after you apply one coat of paint, you have to let it dry for a, several hours to a day before you can tape it up because when you peel the tape off off wet paint, you can peel the paint up. So going with one color for everything saves a bunch of time there. If you want to be more advanced, do multiple different colors, uh, weathering, you're going to have to budget more time for the painting aspect. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below. And while you're down there, don't forget to like that smash button. And if you want to help support the channel, the content I create and the things I do, there's links in the description as well. Be sure you're following me on Twitter at 3DP Nero and join the community discord because tonight on Halloween, if it stops raining, um, I'm going to be out trick or treating with the little guy wearing my Mandalorian armor suit. So I'm going to be posting some pictures uh, there and also on the community page of this YouTube channel as well. Happy Halloween. Enjoy your holiday, eat some candy, and take care. Cheers.